welcome to another edition, a very special edition of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. Today, once again, we're going to be talking with Jack San Felice about the area of the Silver King and Pinell City, but it all ties in with a mystery of the Superstition Mountains. Now, the reason I'm wearing this hat here is because this is going to be the story of two soldiers. Now, you may have heard this story before, but it is a real mystery. And I'm wearing an authentic hat here like the soldiers wore back then. So let's get to Jack where he tells us the story. They found a mine dump with some ore on it, but they were soldiers. But wait a minute, what did I say about soldiers? Cowboys and soldiers made dollar a day. Miners made four, four times as much. So they wanted to come to Silver King to get a stake to go to California or whatever they wanted to do. And so they thought a shortcut. Now they, wanted, they could have ridden a stagecoach out of McDowell and come around the mountain and to Pinell City, around the south side of Superstition, the stagecoach, and then could have come up this way. But that cost a minimum of $5, okay? That's $10 a piece. Well, $10, $5 was a lot of money. They didn't have the money. They didn't have, can you believe that? They didn't have $5 to ride a stagecoach. So they said, well, the weather's nice and we'll hike through the mountains. And they followed part of the old, they call it military trail. There was no military trail through the superstitions. People say this was the military, but there is none. There's no trail that was called the military. There were trails that the military took. The, the most often trail used that went through the mountains actually was used by uh, uh, Crook's army, Crook's soldiers, and they have actual records of that, and I have those. And I, I followed that trail to get to some high-grade mines where gold was and silver was in the superstitions. Hiking through the mountains at a location, they found what they thought was an abandoned mine, and I figured the year to be 1883, okay? And about 1883, they're coming through the mountain. They find this old mine and it's got stuff and they don't know what the stuff is. I mean, it probably looked what, like Larry got. Probably looked like copper, but mixture of copper, gold, maybe some silver and whatnot. And so they put it in their backpack and they come on to, to Silver King looking for Aaron Mason, the first superintendent here. Well, by then, Aaron Mason was the mine manager. He was no longer the first superintendent. They had a real engineer, going to an engineer college to be in, as an engineer here. So that was 1883. So about that time, Mason became the mine superintendent. He was in charge of the mine and the mill. In other words, he could cut what he wanted out of here and cut what he wanted out of there. He was the big maha, and he became a millionaire. Multi -million Four guys out of Silver King became multimillionaires. Jim Barney was the first president. Mason, Charlie Mason became a multimillionaire. Jack Frazier became a multimillionaire. Uh, Bowen, Robert Bowen, who's the underground foreman. And so those four guys became multimillionaires. Nobody else was making that kind of money, okay? So they find this ore, they come here to look for Mason Silver King, he's not here. He said he's down at Pinnell City at the mill. So they walk down to five miles with nothing for them on a road, piece of cake. Going downhill, piece of cake. So they walk down there and hook up with Mason. And he's down there with the assayer and, and uh, talking about some ore. And they, they go up to me and say, we want a job here. And uh, they're talking to him about his job. He said, well, I can put you on his muckers up at the mill and you'll get paid $4 a day, $4 a day. Okay. And we work, I think they were working seven days a week then, but there was some fluctuation of getting time off. Okay. Some fluctuation because they would, they would, um, when they had a breakdown, they could stop. Okay. And like I say, they work 10 hour, two shifts, 50 men apiece. Okay. And it worked the various levels of the mine, various levels. Uh, the, the mine became uh, seven, eight, nine working levels, okay, nine. There are seven main levels, two auxiliary levels. 
and it went down to almost 800 feet. And then below that was a huge sump because they at that time were getting in uh, 200 gallons of water a day and they couldn't use that water up here. Well, anyhow, and they said, by the way, after they talked to him, he actually hired them on as, as muckers. They said, by the way, we were going through the Superstition Mountains and, and I think actually they, in those days, I don't know if they call them superstitions or if they called them the Goldfield Mountains or they called them, there was another name that they were called. Uh, the, the mountains had different names. The superstition name really didn't catch on until the story of the Lost Dutchman. So they were called different things. Uh, gold, they were called the Salt River Mountains. Part of them was Salt River, part of them gold filled, and the other part was Superstition Mountain was only the one mountain, okay, out there. The whole Superstitions were, that which became the forest and the Superstition, that whole area, now is the Superstition, but that day it wasn't. It was different, it had three different names or so. Anyhow, he, they pulled this ore out of the sacks and, um, Mason said, wow, I don't know, that looks like gold. I'm gonna have my assayer retort it for you. Whoa, 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 what does retort mean? Retort it means that they, they break it up and they, they use mercury and they um, use a process where the mercury is heated up and it goes through where the fine powder, the golds of powder make it a powder little pieces and the mercury adheres to the gold. When they heat it and the mercury goes back through the tubes, it drops out and into another container and it's used again, but the gold pieces and all that is what's left, okay? And he said, wow, he said, I'm gonna pay you guys $800 for this gold. You have gold in this, it's high grade. You don't wanna be miners, you wanna go back and relocate that and I'll, I'll help you get started and show you how to locate and file a claim. I figured he'd be back here in two weeks. They bought mules, they bought long guns. He said, now the Apaches are still out. You want to buy some long guns. And so they bought long guns, they bought uh, food, they bought uh, st stakes and kind of things that they would need to set up a mine. Paper, pencils, things like that. Just, how to file it, how to set your stakes. Uh, and a mining claim in those days is basically what it is today. Uh, unless you have a, 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 a gulch claim or a river claim on a river or a creek, it, it was actually 1,600, 1,500 feet by 300 feet. Uh, 600 feet, I'm sorry. 300 feet is the center post and then a, and then it's 300 each side, and it's 1,500 feet long, so it's 600, 600, 600. So that's 600 times 1,500, it's 20 acres. It, to make it it's simple, it's 20 acres. So it, uh, he said, wow, this is how you gotta file this claim, and you gotta ought to file some claims around you if you see everything that looks good. They left here, the two soldiers with their long guns or supplies and known how to file, but they left by themselves. So what happened to them? They have never seen alive again. Never seen alive again. They were murdered in the superstition. Two bodies were found that were pretty sure that one of them was a soldier because they, they were killed and made to look like the Apaches killed them because they took most of their clothes. If they left the hat, and the hat was bought at, from the store in the, 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 uh, the company store at Fort McDowell, okay, the black hats. And um, some of the other things uh, um, reminded them that they were soldiers. Not Did anyone ever dig them up and verify who they were? Tom Collinboard dug up one of the graves over there by Quarter Circle U by Miner's Needle, and, and he dug, uh, and that picture of me is in there, it's this area, this grave is near here. All right, then where's the grave? I, I can't tell where it was, because nobody knows where it was. I thought if Tom could go back to it today, because it's all disappeared over there now. Everything's changed. Hiking trails, horse trails, this, that, and the other. 
They never found them alive and they didn't find the mine. There was thought that that was the Lost Dutchman mine. Well, why did they people think that? Well, because the Dutchman in the early days came by Silver King for supplies. He could buy supplies here or later in Pinell City. But the last time he said he was here, by his mine in the super spite. The mines that I found are only 12 miles from here. 12 miles east of, northeast of here. The mines that I found. And I, I wrote all about them in a book called The Lost El Dorado of Jacob Waltz. Because guess what I come out here for? I had known about the soldier story before I really got hot on the Dutchman story. And I said, I, everybody's written about stories about the Dutch. I'm going to write a story about the lost soldier's mine. No way. It was so difficult, and it's so difficult. I have 3,000 pages in binders on the Lost, Dutch, the lost Soldier's Mine. I have 300 pay, by, li, binders on the Dutchman Mine. That's as much information as out there on the Dutchman. I have 100-some books on the Dutchman, including my own. And Jesse Feldman has got a book called, and Ron Feldman, who wrote books about the Dutchman. And Tom Collinborn, who wrote books about, and an article, and Tom wrote a lot about the Dutchman in his articles, Collinborn Chronicles. So, and then Greg Davis. So I followed and I wanted to find that soldier's trail. Because the Dutchman had been here. He used to go from here to Pinell City and to Florence and he'd pay for things with gold, either gold dust or gold nuggets. People remembered him from those days. Just how important was the Silver King mine? So this mine, not only is it part of the history of mining in this area, but it also has a flavor to it of the Lost Dutchman and the Lost Soldiers mine. While the mystery of the two soldiers was never solved and the two bodies or the remains thereof were never completely identified because the clothes had been taken from them, there was the one thing remaining and that's the hat. So at least one of them we know was a soldier. Was it the two soldiers that came to Silver King? It's one of the mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.